welcome to Living the Messiah's Love. I'm your host, Kamisha. Welcome back, and we're so glad to be here with you. My beloved is here, and we are looking forward to getting into this lesson in this episode with you today. Before we get started, let's take a moment and pray. Lord, we just thank you for who you are. We thank you for this day that you have made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. And we thank you for your faithfulness, the favor that you've bestowed upon us. And I just can't stop talking about how gentle you are with us and that your loving kindness doesn't fail, but it always endures. And I just thank you for that, Lord. I appreciate it. Um, Truly, from the bottom of my heart, Lord Jesus, I receive your love for me and for your people, for us, your believers, and your, your just faithfulness. I can't say anything else but those words, Lord. So I thank you for that. Um, Minister to us, Holy Spirit. We appreciate your presence as well. Guide us into all truth and lead us to the conclusion and the destination that you have for us, Lord. I thank you that you are so faithful to see us into the kingdom of God and not just in the sweet by and by, the eternal, but here today that we receive the benefits, the blessing, and the outcome that the Father desires for us and designed for us before the foundation of the world. Lord, open your word to us today and let our hearts um, mend and connect with yours so that we understand your perfect will. We understand your character and your nature and that we desire and persevere and pursue having your will be done in our lives on earth as it is in heaven. We thank you for all the provision that you've provided for us. Lord, help us connect with it and to see the blessing that you've set before us and to receive it. In Jesus almighty name we pray. Amen. Oh, and if we have any ought against anyone, we forgive right here, right now, Lord, in Jesus almighty name. Amen. And amen. All right. My love, thank you for being here. As always, I always appreciate you allowing the Lord to minister through you. It's a pleasure to be here. It's a, it's an honor. It's a, it's a blessing. And just, well, first and foremost, just to do the Lord's will. That's a, that's a privilege that man, I do not deserve, but I'm blessed to be able to go forward in the glory of the Lord and do. Amen. 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 Okay. Today we are going to talk about generational curses. If you've been around the Christian church for any time, I'm sure you've probably heard about them. And even in the world, there is a, um, a, a, a mindset. Yeah. Common mindset that goes around um, amongst unsaved people and believers alike, that they are cursed because of their parents or something that their family or someone in their lineage has done. And I just want to bring the truth, oh, break the truth to you today. What (laughs) would you want to say, honey? Uh, So uh, part of the ordeal for the the timing of this portion of the message in this training, right, is because Mm -hmm. we just concluded or wrapped up looking at the gifts from the Father, right? Mm Mm-hmm. But if you recall, it started out as what it looks like in children and then progressed to adulthood, right? As we grow and mature. So this is why this, if you will, the timing for this message, this teaching, this training uh, portion is now, right? Mm -hmm. Because it connects or it's going to connect some things and prepare us for our children, and as we train them, teach them, equip them, admonish them, encourage them Mm -hmm. up to or into adulthood. Amen. And it's also about us because the word of God says in John chapter eight, and you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Your children won't be free if you're not free. So we got to start with you. And remember, we're in the God's Warriors AIT advanced individual training. So this, everything that the Lord has been doing, even through basic training and now in AIT is about you being strong in him, strengthened in him and being (laughs) free to do his will. Now, one of the ways that the adversary, um, or that just people are weak and it really has nothing to do with the adversary is a lack of understanding, a lack of knowledge of the things of God. And the Lord said here that the truth us knowing the truth, (laughs) then that truth will make us free. If the truth is out there somewhere, but you don't know it, you won't be freed by it, regardless of what the law is on the books or how long it's been there. But if you don't know about it, 
you won't be free yet. So the knowledge we're we're looking at that because God wants his warriors to be free of burden of bondage so that they can go forward and they will not be weakened by any attack of the adversary, nor will they be weakened by their own ignorance. Um, There's another scripture that says my people perish for lack of knowledge. They forgot the knowledge of God. And it caused them to be destroyed. So we don't want to forget the knowledge of God. And that doesn't just mean Christianese. I like some of God's principles. This, what the Lord is talking about and what our Savior walked in was absolute in-depth freedom and understanding of who his heavenly father is and what his heavenly father desired for him and designed for him and would do for him. And so that brought a liberty in Christ. It brought a strength to him that he would not fail at anything the father required of him to do, requested that he do. He didn't miss any of his message. But if you go back and look at the things that he said about the father, he said that the father knew him, that he and the father were one, that the father would fulfill the word that he had given him. All of those things Jesus was absolutely confident in. And there was no one and nothing that could come and speak a word to him or hurt his physical body that would get him to give up on his mission. Now, we learn this in the basic training series that um, we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. Right. And this is a spiritual battle that we are in. And that's where our warfare happens. Warfare happens is in the spiritual realm. We're not wrestling against people. Hmm. They're not our issue. But the ability to stand and stand there for comes by using or discovering, knowing who God is, what he desires, what he's planned, and that you can absolutely trust him. So this is something that gnaws on people. They, they have um, connected themselves and they call it a generational curse. And I just wanted to finish my thought from before and break the truth to you. Generational curses do not exist. Amen. Okay, and that might burn your biscuits. You might be rolling over sizzling right now saying, yes, uh uh-huh, they told me they said this and it looks like that and I'm just like so-and-so. Absolutely not. I rebuke that in the almighty name of Jesus. That's actually a lie from the pit of hell. And it's a lie from carnal flesh designed by the adversary and humans to keep other people in bondage. Christ came to set us free. And he set us free. Exactly. But you have to partake of that freedom. Mm -hmm. And remember, it's the knowledge, it's knowing the truth and you applying it to your life that allows you to go free. What Christ did for us and even the truth that existed before Christ manifested in his earthly um, ministry, that is who God is. And this is how God looks at things. So we're going to go and do we're going to do some research today and we're going to spend a lot of time in this episode reading over scripture. So go ahead and prepare yourself and we're going to see the truth of God's word, the truth of spiritual um, laws. And we're going to begin breaking up that fallow ground that is telling you in the back of your mind that you're cursed and you can't go free from X, Y, and Z because of dot, 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 that someone else did in a generational thing and you're doing it because your mama did it and your daddy did it. We're going to talk about these things. And if you're willing, you will be set free by the time we finish this. If you're willing, you'll know the truth and you'll be able to not only pass that down to your children if you have them, but you'll be able to pass that to your brothers, your sisters, your neighbors, if you're willing. If I love you. Want to say something? Yes, because the there's the if you will, for lack of a better phrase, it the flip side of it. The the there's the, if you're willing to believe mm-hmm. the truth, Amen. you will be set free. Amen. But if you choose to believe the lie, mm-hmm. then you will see it manifest in your life. Mm-hmm. It, it is what it is, right? Those that believe, whatever they believe, will uh, usually end up seeing that. Come to fruition. Amen. And just so you know, the adversary is not a gentleman. He doesn't no. care if you're deceived and you deceive yourself all the way into bitterness. He doesn't and care if it's a technicality. Exactly. He's looking for a foothold. He doesn't He doesn't care and he does not take that time off. He doesn't go, oh, you didn't know better. I'll, I'll leave you alone. Nope. If you give him an opportunity, he is going to bring into your life whatever you give him permission to bring. And, and as you said about Christ, he came to set us free mm-hmm. and he did set us free. And who the son sets free is free indeed. Amen to that. Amen. And that freedom, you still have to receive it. Christ died once for all, but yet still people go unsaved. 
Why? Because they choose not to receive or accept the salvation. Now for you, my beloved brother and sister in Christ, you've already chosen to receive the Lord. And you also have to choose to receive each of the additional benefits and blessing that come in that salvation package. Amen. All that Christ came to do for you, receive every bit of it. And sometimes it's a matter of just having that specific item revealed and that detail presented to you. So then you now have the opportunity to receive it um, as you need to. So we're going to start in Ezekiel. Um, we're going to start in Ezekiel chapter 16, verses 3 through 14. Now, if you've been with us any time, you know that when we read the scripture, we are listening for Holy Spirit to minister to us. And we are looking beyond what we normally think the scripture means. We're looking to see God's character and his nature because he never changes. Who he is throughout the scripture never changes. And regardless of what you think words mean or um, what other people say they mean, that doesn't matter. God is who he is and it means what God desires it to be um, articulated. His heart on the matter is what we're looking for. That way we can understand him and have that confidence, the same confidence that Christ had in his heavenly father, we can have in our heavenly father. And that includes the fullness of the Godhead, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, okay? Because they're one, they have one mission. So let's start in Ezekiel 16, verses three through 14. Let's just start at verse one, because it gives the full thing, right? It says, then the word of the Lord came to me saying, son of man, make known to Jerusalem her abominations and say, Thus says the Lord God to Jerusalem, Your origin and your birth are from the land of the Canaanite. Your father was an Amorite and your mother a Hittite. As for your birth, on the day you were born, your navel cord was not cut, nor were you washed with water for cleansing. You were not rubbed with salt or even wrapped in cloths. No eye looked with pity on you to do any of these things for you, to have compassion on you. Rather, you were thrown out into the open field. For you were aboard on the day you were born. When I passed by you and saw you squirming in your blood, I said to you while you were in your blood, live. Yes, I said to you while you were in your blood, live. I made you numerous like plants in the field. Then you grew up, became tall, and reached the age for fine ornaments. Your breasts were formed and your hair had grown, yet you were naked and bare. Then I passed by you and saw you and behold, you were at the time for love, so I spread my skirt over you and covered your nakedness. I also swore to you and entered into a covenant with you, <clears throat> Excuse me, so that you became mine, declares the Lord God. Then I bathed you in water, washed off your blood from you, and anointed you with oil. I also clothed you with embroidered cloth and put sandals of porpoise skin on your feet. And I wrapped you with fine linen and covered you with silk. I adorned you with ornaments and put bracelets on your hands and a necklace around your neck. I also put a ring in your nostril, earrings in your ears, and a beautiful crown on your head. Thus you were adorned with gold and silver, and your dress was of fine linen, silk, and embroidered cloth. You ate fine flour, honey, and oil, so you were exceedingly beautiful and advanced to royalty." Then your fame went forth among the nations on account of your beauty. For it was perfect because of my splendor, which I bestowed upon you, declares the Lord God. Okay. Amen. Thank you for reading that, darling. Absolutely. So in context, this is talking to Israel about how God picked her up from nothing and mm -hmm. made her something. But this shows God's character. Amen. When we were nothing and no one and nobody wanted us and nobody cared. He cared for us. When people put their focus on generational curses, they tend to take the perspective that somehow God has abandoned them. God didn't love them. He didn't protect them. He didn't do these X, Y, and Z for them. And, um, therefore they must be cursed X dot, dot, dot. But what this scripture is showing is the character of God is no, no, no. The truth is when nobody loved you, I came and protected you who threw this child the, it's referencing a baby right. being thrown into the field after it was born. Who threw that baby there? His own or her the parents, own. right? The parents, their the own parents, parents threw them away. Threw that child away and did not care, but God cared. So, and then not only did he care, but he watched out and he, you see the progression of being a child all the way to adulthood. 
and not just in the natural upbringing, like, okay, I raised you from a baby to an adult, but he also blessed that child's life and raised it from being unwanted and undesirable to being royalty. Uh And um, you see that same context and content of information when the Lord talks about um, our covenant with him. Amen. And how we'll be called by his name and he'll call us blessed and all those kind of things. So you see both the natural and the, um, I won't say professional, that's really not the word that I'm thinking of, but how he cared even about their their destiny and their outcome, not exactly. just to get them from baby to adult, you know, wipe his hands, my job mm-hmm. is done, but to also see them through the phases of life so that they went from being unloved to being royalty. So that's God's character. Now, the ones who didn't care, that's human character. Right. You had something you want to say, darling? Oh, well, there's two things. And you, you brought up about covenant. But he says even in here, I entered in a covenant with you. Mm-hmm. Right. At the, essentially at the proper time, the proper age. Mm-hmm. Right. When, when, when you they could had. Understand and, mm-hmm. when, exactly. When they, that child, could understand. They weren't. They were no longer a child. They were, you know, an adolescent or in mm-hmm. maturing into adulthood. Mm-hmm. And they could make that choice and decision for themselves that he entered into covenant mm-hmm. with them. And then you see even more blessings bestowed upon the life of that individual, the, mm-hmm. the royalty. And then as a result, the uh, favor of the Lord, all those things that then went forth. Mm-hmm. So uh, I think that's that's one of the biggest things. Is Amen. Understanding that the Lord already extended mm-hmm. his, I'll say, hand of favor, but his covenant that mm-hmm. he desires to make with you for you. Amen. And, and, and if you have chosen him, then you've entered into that covenant. Amen. And this also kind of reminds me of David. If you could think about it, a child who was left out in the field. Mm-hmm. Hey, hey, watch the sheep. His Absolutely. parents didn't care anything about him. They didn't even invite him to a dinner, you know, that every, at least he could have gotten some food. But, uh, you know, a dinner that was getting ready to happen where some someone was going to be named king in the family. They didn't even think to call him in. But yet while he was out there, he made a covenant with God right out there in the field. And God cleaned him up and proceeded to raise him to that standard of royalty. And it's not because his name was David. Right. So try to take that. Well, that's King David. That's a different circumstance. No, this is how God feels about all of his children. So the second thing I wanted to bring up was, was this. Because so we're talking about generational curses. Where were these? This, where was this person's parents from? I say nowhere. Canaanites <laughs> and Hittites, right? Yeah, Amorites okay. and Hittites in the land of Canaan. So there, yeah. there you go. All right. So both of those that don't exist anymore. So if we're talking about generational curses, then on the curse, this individual should not exist they would have experienced the same outcome as their parents and the other generations. But we see here that that's not what happened. Mm -hmm. That the Lord in his grace and his mercy extended his covenant and raised them up. Raised them and raised them up in front of all the nations. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. So let's go to Ezekiel 18. And we're going to read verses 1 through 13 first, and then we'll move to the other sections of this um, of this chapter. So 1 through 18? 1 through 13. Oh, 13. Okay. Mm-hmm. Then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, What do you mean by using this proverb concerning the land of Israel? Saying, The fathers eat sour grapes, but the children's teeth are set on edge. As I live, declares the Lord God, you are surely not going to use this proverb in Israel anymore. Behold... All souls are mine. The soul of the father as well as the soul of the son is mine. Mm -hmm. The soul who sins will die. Now highlight that. Mm -hmm. Underline that in your Bible. The soul who sins shall die. Okay, keep going, honey. But if a man is righteous and practices justice and righteousness and does not eat at the mountain shrines or lift up his eyes to the idols of the house of Israel, nor defile his neighbor's wife, nor approach a woman during her menstrual period. If a man does not oppress anyone, but restores to the debtor his pledge, does not commit robbery, but gives his bread to the hungry, and covers the naked with clothing. If he does not lend money on interest or take increase, if he keeps his hand from iniquity and executes true justice between man and man, if he walks in my statutes and my ordinances so as to deal 
excuse me, yes, yeah, so as to deal faithfully. He is righteous and will surely live, declares the Lord God. Then he may have a violent son who sheds blood and who does any of these things to a brother, though he himself did not do any of these things. That is, he even eats at the mountain shrines and defiles his neighbor's wife, oppresses the poor and needy, commits robbery, does not restore a pledge, but lifts up his eyes to the idols and commits abomination. He lends money on interest and takes increased. Will he live? He will not live. He has committed all these abominations. He will surely be put to death. His blood will be on his own head. Okay. Underline that very last. His blood shall be upon his own head or upon him, depending on which um, translation that you're using. So you see, the person who sins brings connection to the curse in their own life. The connection to the curse is sin. Right. Mm -hmm. You think back to when man and woman were placed in the garden, they were an absolute blessing until they each uniquely and individually sinned. How do we know it wasn't a group um, judgment? Because when he the Lord um, pronounced to them or announced to them what they had unleashed into their life, he dealt with the serpent. He dealt with the woman and then he dealt with the man. Right. Individually mm -hmm. and uniquely. And they released into their own life connection to the curse based on and because of their own sin. So this whole section is telling us if you sin, you will be connected to everything that is outside of God, right? There's two sides. We already talked about there's two different kingdoms. One kingdom is God's kingdom. The other kingdom is the adversary's kingdom. One is the blessing. And one is the curse. Absolutely. And the curse is not some phantom figment of your or anybody's imagination. What it's saying is that you give the adversary foothold in your life. And you have no idea how it will manifest. You can look at Leviticus 26 and Deuteronomy 28. Mm -hmm. Right? There's very, there's very simple and easy. The blessings of obedience. Mm -hmm. But then... The, the consequences of disobedience, which is the second part of both of those chapters, mm -hmm. you'll find that they are long and lengthy complicated. And, and complex, complicated, yeah. exactly, because there's no telling. You don't know. You can't decide. You can't calculate how the consequences of disobedience or sin will mm -hmm. manifest in your life. Okay. Amen. So what's the takeaway? God does not hold us accountable for what our parents did. Exactly. He holds each one accountable for their own activities and action. And anytime someone is connected to the kingdom of darkness is because they themselves connected themselves. Okay. So we're going to continue reading the rest of this chapter, but write that down on your paper, look at it and write it in your heart. Each one, the, the righteous father was not held accountable for his wicked son. And we're going to continue reading. Let's go. Now behold, this is verse 14. Now mm -hmm. behold, he has a son who has observed all his father's sins, which he committed, and observing does not do likewise. He does not eat at the mountain shrines or lift up his eyes to the idols of the house of Israel or defile his neighbor's wife or oppress anyone or retain a pledge or commit robbery. But he gives his bread to the hungry and covers the naked with clothing. He keeps his hand from the poor, but does not take interest or increase, but executes my ordinances and walks in my statutes. He will not die for his father's iniquity. He will surely live. Mm -hmm. As for his father, because he practiced extortion, robbed his brother, and did what was not good among his people, behold, he will die for his iniquity. Okay, so God told us the standard right there. Just because you have wicked people in your lineage, that you, you came from people who did wicked things, abominations before the Lord, that has nothing to do with you as far as how God judges you, okay? He's not holding you accountable for what somebody else did. Neither is he holding anybody else accountable for what you did. When you stand before him, whether it's now or in eternity, it'll be because of, based on, or based on what are you doing or have you done, okay? Mm -hmm. So... Let's keep reading. We're going to read verses 19 through 32. It says, Yet you say, Why should the son not bear the punishment for the father's iniquity? When the son has practiced justice and righteousness and has observed all my statutes and done them, he shall surely live. 
The person whose sins will die. The son will not bear the punishment for the father's iniquity. Nor will the father bear the punishment for the son's iniquity. All right, circle that verse. Mm -hmm. Meditate on it. Okay, keep going, honey. Thank you. (laughs) The righteousness of the righteous will be upon himself, and the wickedness of the wicked will be upon himself. Amen. But if the wicked man turns from all his sins which he has committed and observes my statutes and practices justice and righteousness, he shall surely live. He shall not die. All his transgressions which he has committed will not be remembered against him. Because of his righteousness which he has practiced, he will live. Mm -hmm. Do I have any pleasure in the death of the wicked, declares the Lord God? rather than that he should turn from his ways and live. But when a righteous man turns away from his righteousness, commits iniquity, and does according to all the abominations that a wicked man does, will he live? All his righteous deeds which he has done will not be remembered for his treachery which he has committed and his sin which he has committed. For them he will die. Yet you say, the way of the Lord is not right. Hear now, O house of Israel, my way not right? Is it not your ways that are not right? When a righteous man turns away from his righteousness, commits iniquity, and dies because of it, for his iniquity which we, he, for which he has committed, he will die. Again, when a wicked man turns away from his wickedness which he has committed, and practices justice and righteousness, he will save his life. Because he considered... And turned away from all his transgressions, which he had committed. He shall surely live. He shall not die. Mm-hmm. But the house of Israel says, The way of the Lord is not right. Are my ways not right? O house of Israel, is it not your ways that are not right? Therefore I will judge you, O house of Israel, each according to his conduct, declares the Lord God. Repent. And turn away all your transgressions, so that iniquity may not become a stumbling block to you. Cast away from you all your transgressions which you have committed, and make yourselves a new heart and a new spirit. For why will you die, O house of Israel? For I have no pleasure in the death of anyone who dies, declares the Lord God. Therefore, repent and live. Amen. Um, and let me just read my the way it appears in my um, translation, verses 29 through 32. It says, Yet the house of Israel says, The way of the Lord is not fair. O house of Israel, is it not my ways which are fair, and your ways which are not fair? Therefore I will judge you, O house of Israel, everyone according to his ways, says the Lord God. Repent and turn from all your transgressions so that iniquity iniquity will not be your ruin. Cast away from you all the transgressions which you have committed and get yourselves a new heart and a new spirit. For why should you die, O house of Israel? For I have no pleasure in the death of one who dies, says the Lord God. Therefore, turn and live. Okay. So circle that. Verse 29. Israel, the people said the children should suffer for the parents. And God said, no, that's not what I want. That's not what I'm doing. And that's not how this works. It's not going down like that. It is not the spiritual law that's in place. And I, as the Lord, the Lord says he does not adhere to that. And the people had an issue understanding the way of God and the heart of God. And they would rather see their children suffer then see their children judged based on what their own actions are. So meditate on this word. Um, we're about out of time for today's episode. And Just we'll pick up. Make one comment quickly. Oh, sure, baby. Verse 24, right? Mm-hmm. You see the standard and the consistency. Here it is in Ezekiel, right? And it says, but when a righteous man turns away from his righteousness, commits iniquity, and does according to all the abominations that a wicked man does, will he live? And then he says this key part. All his righteous deeds, which he has done, will not be remembered for his treachery, which he has committed, and his sin, which he has committed, for them he will die. And what does it say about in Revelation? And it talks about exactly how some are going to say, hey, Lord, but I did all these things Mm -hmm. in your name. And he's going to say, depart from me, I never knew you. 
-hmm. Not, I didn't know your parents. He says, I never knew you. The notes right here Mm -hmm. that they turned away and began committing iniquity. Mm -hmm. So, and as for that reason, the Lord said, I never knew them. Mm -hmm. Because again, as it says right here, all their righteous deeds were forgotten. Mm Mm-hmm. They wiped them out. They, I think that's they in, wiped um, them out. That's in yes. the Gospels as well. Lord, Lord, we did all these things in your name. Exactly. And he said, no. <laughs> so, so just understand that, right? And it's, that's not a generational thing. That's a, in each individual for themselves before the Lord God. Amen. And the standard of righteousness is here prior to Christ coming on the mm-hmm. scene. And it is there after Christ came on the scene because this is the character and nature of God, which does not change. This is the way of righteousness. And he said him saying, turn and live is saying, repent. Amen. Right. Which is what we do when we come under the blood of Jesus Christ. We repent of our sins. We discard sinful living and iniquitous behavior away from us and a, and a ungodly heart and unclean heart. And we allow him to renew us to life again, and then we proceed and follow him. Yes, we have to come through the blood of Jesus and believing that he is the the true and living son of God. Absolutely. But his character has not changed. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And what he requires is the same. Amen. Amen. All righty. So now we're out of time for this episode. Um, Please spend time going over these scriptures on your own and really sit before the Lord and meditate. Let Holy Spirit minister this to you because he's good. Everyone else is wrong. Anybody that is in disagreement with this, with the Lord and his word and his, but the, the, um, the desire of his heart, the content of what he's saying, they're wrong, not God. Desire, intention of his word. That's right. The intention of what he's saying. They are wrong. And anytime you come up against the word of God and you feel like, I can't receive this, uh uh-uh. Don't allow that to stand. Don't accept that because that's coming out of your flesh. It's coming out of carnality. And the adversary would love for you to reject the word of God because then you will not have light. Then truth cannot set you free. But allow your heart to receive it. Meditate on it. And um, just listen to the Holy Spirit as he unfolds this word to you. Let him bring about the discernment that is needed, whether it is of the Lord or not. Amen. In all things. Amen. Amen. All right. We'll see you on the next episode. Thank you so much for being here with us. We love you and we're praying for you. And remember to live your life in the Messiah's love. God bless you.